Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, we're going to be moving to our third ability. This is going to be Taunt Space. And this is going to spawn some meteors from the sky and deal damage in an area. So let's start by creating a new folder and call this Taunt Space. Okay, open this up and we're going to start by creating a new blueprint class of the type Game Playability. Game Playability. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is going to be this one, and I call this g underscore torn space. Okay, open this up. And what I want to do is, when I activate my ability, I'm going to be basically targeting an area and then confirming my targeting to spawn the meteors and apply damage in that area. So I'm going to say wait target data, this one. And instead of instant, this time this is going to be user confirmed. And for the class, I'm going to use my gas target actor. Okay, trace range can be like uh, 2500. Okay. And what I want to do is once I've started targeting, I want to say just to debug this, I'm going to say targeting active. Okay. Targeting. Okay, and once my user has confirmed the targeting, what I'm going to do is say get hit result from target data. Okay, and what I'm going to do is say break hit results. Okay, and from here, what I want to do if this is a blocking hit, so I'm going to say branch, and if this is a blocking hit, what I want to do is spawn the meter actor on the cosmetics. And that actor is going to also apply the damage. So I'm going to say spawn actor from class. And if this is not a blocking hit, what I want to do is say simply end the ability. And I also want to end the ability once we have spawned the actor. Okay. And for the spawn transform, what I'm going to do is say make transform. And this is going to be only on this impact point or the location where our trace has ended. Okay, so the, basically we are going to be only doing this on the ground and not in the air. So we have to check for this. And just let's add a few debugging parameters. So I'm going to say um, invalid target. Okay, and now what I want to do is create this actor and we also need this radical class to visualize where we are targeting. So let's start by creating this radical class. Going back to our folder, let's save this and create a new blueprint class of the type game play ability world reticle, this one. And call this GA ret and it's going to be torn space. Okay, open this up and Basically, this is just going to be like a visual thing and not doing anything. And I also don't want this to be replicated. So I'm going to add a cylinder. Now you could get away with a decal or something like that, but uh, I've chosen cylinder for this example. And I'm going to change the size to like 661, like 0.1. Okay, and I am going to disable the collision on this. So there's going to be no collision. And for this material, it's going to be uh, rune big, this one. Okay, this looks nice. Compile and save this. And I am going to use this actor inside of my radical class. Okay, we don't need radical plans because we are not going to be using them. Okay. And next we need our actor for this class. Okay. So going back, we are going to create an actor for this. This is going to type blueprint class and this is going to be a simple actor. So I'm going to hold this pp on space um, meteor meteor. Okay, open this up and we don't do over here is add some visuals for our particles and also a overlap trace for the actors inside the area and apply damage to them. 
So for the cosmetic part, what I'm going to do is add a few particles. It's going to be particle system P1, and this is going to be portal fast. This one. Okay, and we also need another particle system. This should be under this, and I'm going to name this P2, and this is going to be. Um, this one and I am going to drag this a little bit up over here okay like so okay this looks nice and I'm also going to add another particle and it's also going to be over here so I'm going to name this p3 and this is going to be meteor fast this one okay and I'm also going to drag this a little bit above over here. And don't worry about this going through. It's going to break on impact with the ground. Okay. And for this, what I want to do is on begin play, I want to overlap a few actors and apply damage to them. Okay. So on begin play, what I want to do is say sphere overlap actors, this one. Okay, and the position is going to be my this actor's location. Okay, and for this sphere radius, I'm going to promote this sphere and call this scan radius. Okay, and this is going to be stance editable and exposed on spawn, so we can set this from our ability. And this is going to have a default value of 500. Okay. And for the object type, what I'm going to do is just simply call make array and we are going to scan for pawns only. Okay, and actors to ignore is going to be make array and I'm going to say get instigator. Okay, and plug this in over here. So we ignore ourselves if you are the casting the ability. Okay, and for the out actors, I'm going to say for each loop. And I'm going to iterate over each of these actors and apply some sort of damage. So I'm going to say get ability system component. Okay. And I'm going to say apply gameplay effect to target. This is the effect spec one. Okay. Not the other effect one. And this is not going to target. It's going to this one. And from my instigator, I'm going to say get ability system component. And I'm going to plug this in over here. Now this could be a useful way, for example, if you want to cater for the damage, the base damage multiplier or some sort of damage from the source that you want to apply on the target. So you would need to specify this to target. But if you don't have that or don't want to use that, you can simply say apply gameplay effect spec to self. Okay. And for the spec handle, I'm also going to promote this to a variable. I'm going to say effect spec handle. Okay, and this is also going to instance eligible and exposed on spawn. Okay, and I think this is done. What you could also do is just check for this is valid. Okay. And this is this. Okay, compile and save this. So we are going to using this actor inside of our ability. So I'm going to set this over here. And now we have exposed the scan radius and effect spec handle. So scan radius is 500. This is fine. For this spec handle, what I'm going to say is make outgoing gameplay effect spec handle. And this is going to be our damage class. And for the instigator, I'm going to say get owning actor from actor info. And drag it from say and say get instigator. And I am going to plug this in over here. Okay. And I think this is it we have to end ability and i'm going to create this gameplay damage class for this one so i'm going to say blueprint class of the type gameplay effect this one and call this ge tom space damage okay open this save this close this and open it again Okay, so this is going to be like an instance damage 
And for the modify, what I'm going to do is just modify the health and I'm going to add and the magnitude is going to be like negative 30. Okay. And this is it. I'm going to use this inside of my tone space ability over here. Okay, compile and save this. And also if you have canceled our targeting, so I'm going to say end ability. Okay, and I think this is it for this. Also, let's change this to always spawn, ignore collisions. So we always spawn this. Okay, compile and save this. So there's a slight problem with this. I want my left mouse button to become the confirmation for this targeting and right mouse button for the cancellation of this targeting. But if you go over to our cryptic class and we see our inputs over here, this primary action is bound to left mouse button as secondary action is bound to my right mouse button. So there's no way to like compensate for the targeting confirmation and targeting cancel. So what I'm gonna do is modify our interface a little bit. So we have this ability interface. What I'm gonna do is open this up and add a new function set is targeting okay and this is going to take an input and it's going to be is targeting okay compile and save this close this up and over here what i'm going to do is create a new variable and call this is targeting okay and i'm going to implement the interface over here um Okay, let's do it over here. So this is going to be this one. Drag this over here. And this is going to be setting this value like so. Okay, comment this set is targeting, okay. So now what I'm going to do is go back to our ability and once we have started targeting, so what I'm going to do is drag out from here and look, but first I want to say get uh, owing actor from actor info and from here I'm going to say set is, um, is targeting this one, okay. I'm going to plug this in over here and this is going to over here and this is going to be true. Now you could check for that it does implement interface but I know my instigator is going to be implementing that interface. So I'm just using it like this. And on my end ability, what I'm gonna do is say event on and ability this one. Okay, what I'm gonna do is get my instigator, sorry, point actor and I'm going to also unset this if the ability has ended because this means we have ended our targeting when whether it is con canceled or confirmed. Okay. So going back to our character, what I want to do is from here for primary and secondary actions, what I want to do is drag out from here and check if we are targeting and only apply this ability if we are not targeting. If we are targeting, what I'm gonna do is drag it from this and say target confirm, okay. And plug this in over here. So let's set these so they are not crossing, okay. And similarly for this one, what I'm gonna do is check out if we are targeting and we wanna cancel this, so we are going to drag out from this and say target cancel this one and drag this over here, range this a bit. Okay. So in this way, we are going to be confirming and canceling targets by our left and right mouse buttons. And we don't need to change some inputs so that our abilities are not activated at the same time. And also what I want to do is 
add an input to activate our targeting for this tone space. And this is going to be Q ability. Rather, this one is E ability, I think. Okay, this one. So now I'm going to do is call this again. And this is going to be on ability system component. And the class is going to be um, GA tone space. Okay. And next, we want to grant this ability to our character. So go to your initial abilities. And if you don't see this, as always, just make sure this is checked. Okay, so I'm going to open this and this is going to be G8 home space. And I think we are good to go. Let's test this out. And I just realized this is not tone space. This is Cosmic Rift. Tone space is the teleportation ability. But um, let's just stick with this, okay? So let's just test it out. And if I move over here and press my E key, I'm targeting and if I press my left mouse button, it's applying the ability and I just realized that the effects are not visible to the other client. So to fix that, just open up your tone space meteor, VP tone space meteor, go to your class defaults and just check this replicates. Okay, save this and let's test it again. So this time, okay, so my targeting, uh, Radical actor is not visible to the other client, which it should be. And when I apply my effect, it's visible to the other client and the damage is applied instantly. Okay, same is case with the other correct uh, client. Okay, so one thing to note over here is that the damage is being applied instantly to the other actor. If you want that to be linked to the particle, you can do that and just delay the damage application by a few seconds or just link it up to the particle in themselves okay okay so one thing i want to mention over here is that for the play mode i'm using this play as client this is going to launch a dedicated server behind the scenes i had a little bit of issue that i was talking about in the first video when i play this as a listen server so my radical actor is replicated on the server but not on the client so if i play as the client so you see the targeting actor is also visible towards the server side and if I play as my server the target actor is not visible to the client okay so just to prevent this error I had to use this um, play as client instead of the listen server for the net mode so if you get to find a better way uh, do tell me just keep this in mind while working on your project okay so this is it for this video, but uh, just to inform you, I'll be renaming this to the Cosmic Rift because the Tone Space is the teleportation ability and we'll be creating that in the next video. So just note that I'll be changing the name to Cosmic Rift after this video. So this is it for this video. Thank you very much.